Well, today I got a new project and I want to uh, upgrade my tail lights and running lights to LED. I've always, you know, every couple times a year I usually end up having a light that's flickering, going out, giving me trouble. So I took my tail light out and I've got the Winnebago 38J and it, this particular light fixture is actually the same as I think a 2002 Toyota Corolla. That's what they happen to use in the back of this RV. And just for information's sake, if you ever need to get a replacement lens, if you look closely at the bottom of any lens, there'll be some numbers here. And you just get to Googling those numbers and uh, you can locate the replacement lens. And I think these new are even like only 50 bucks a piece, something like that. But the lens and everything is fine, but I've always had problems with loose bulbs, things arcing. So when I took this off, I thought, well, maybe I'll just get another burned out bulb, but my bulbs tested fine. The problem was actually in this connector. And I don't know if the camera will pick it up or not, but it's a little bit green in there. So, um, so I'm getting some corrosion. And of course, what I don't like is it's not a very good connector the way it's designed, because you can see it's open on the back. So all the moisture and dampness just falls right in there. It's not a sealed connector like um, a lot of automotive connection, connections would be. So I'm going to address that. Um, something else I want to address is the fact about the corrosion anyway, you know, how to get that corrosion out. So I got to reading online about how to clean up some of these connections, and I did a test. One thing I wrote about was using vinegar and salt. And I poured some in here in this cup. I let that own oh, this piece of copper pipe. You see how nasty it is. It's been sitting out in the weather for years. And uh, so as a test, I set it in there overnight and it really made a difference in that old, old copper. So I thought, well, if it, you know, as a test, it, it does seem to work. But they do say if you use vinegar and salt solution to clean a connection, uh, but then you need to go back and clean the connection with uh, baking soda, I guess, to neutralize it. So, anyway, so that's what I'm going to do with this connection here and also with my connection that's on the RV. And then I got some something else here, this ox guard I'm going to put on the connection to help uh, prevent any future trouble. And then my next plan, I got some liquid electrical tape. So I thought that would be good to put all on, on the back side of, of this so I can seal those wires up and keep any moisture out once I get everything cleaned up and, and put back together. So I've got that to do, and okay, we'll talk a little bit about these goofy bulbs. And as you can see how the bulbs are always, you know, they, they burn out, they get hot, they get loose, and you can even see on, like on this one here, how, how black it is, where this bulb was just in there rattling around, I guess, creating arcing heat. In fact, when I went to take this harness out, well, one of these large bulbs like this actually would not come out. Uh, it stayed inside and the reason it did it also got hot and melted the plastic so the plastic melted got distorted so when I pulled the connector out the bulb fell inside uh, and then I had to take a Dremel tool to Dremel this out to kind of get a make a circle out of it again just so I could get the, the bulb out and you can see it looks like we had some melting on, on that 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 one also so I'm gonna try to address these problems get that cleaned up oh also for the uh, like the turner signal light uh, here, you have to get you some load resistors. Uh, so I think a pack of four is like seven dollars, six dollars, and because you need those to simulate the old style bulbs, so that you get the correct flash time. Otherwise, you get super fast flashing. So I've gathered up all my goodies. I've got these nice LED here. This is also another thing I like. See how wide your connection is compared to the, the, these bulbs where they just got a tiny little wire. So I believe the connections should be much better, you know, kind of match what we got inside the socket. So that's going to be today's project. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to just do one side and plug it all up and then compare it to the other side because the other side still has the original bulbs in it to see if I can tell the difference. But I know sometimes on camera it, it don't, the camera kind of wants to compensate for the light and sometimes it's hard to really get an accurate uh, measurement that way. But I do, that's right, I do have my little light meter. That might be a way of doing it. So I could take my, uh, measure the lumens. That might be a better way to, to test. So, uh, alrighty, I guess that's where we'll gather up some tools and start this little project.
All right, I'm here on a sunny day, and I don't know if you can see if it's going to pick it up or not, but inside it's really green and corroded. And I keep, every time I put the connection there, I wiggle it. It'll, lots of work, they won't work, it's intermittent. So I've got me some of that vinegar and salt solution in this cup. So I'm going to let this sit here and soak for a little while, and we'll see what happens. Okay, you see what I've done here, I've taken all my other connectors that go to the back of the, the light and I bound them together for a band so I'm going to drop them in this in this cup that solution so they all soak at the same time okay I'm back inside I don't know if you if the camera will pick it up or not but those terminals do look much better the, the copper seems to be much brighter and they got me these little tools here whole set of them at Amazon for a few bucks they're great for stuff like this. You can get in and clean things up, get the crud off of them. But one thing you can get in here and, and like bend these to make a tighter fit. You know, if you're a little loose connection, you can get in here and bend them down so it grabs those light bulbs tighter. So I'm going to work on that. I'm going to mix me up some um, baking soda and water, neutralize it. That's what it says to do, where I've seen it on the internet. So I'll do that and we'll plug things up and start testing these lights. <coughs> Sounds good. Okay, so I got her cleaned up. I did the baking soda thing. Then I took my wife's nail filing board. Don't tell her. And I went in here and got a little bit better. I got in there and cleaned them up real good. So I'll make my connection here and see if we hopefully we'll get rid of that intermittent nonsense that's been going on. So I'd, I'd push or pull on this and I'd lose connection. So hopefully that's been resolved. All right, as you can see, all my lights are on. They look good. And when I push and pull on this connector, I push, pull, the lights stay on. They're not flickering like they used to. They used to, if I just touched that thing, they would act up. So I got that part solved, I believe. Lights look good now. To make a little bit better connection because still I don't like the way this des is designed because you can see how these this wiring harness just sits right down in here and all the moisture from the ground just flows up in here and it's always staying damp so my thought is I got me some of this liquid electrical tape and I'll take it and put it around these wires up here on both both sides at least that'll s seal the connector a little bit better keep the moisture out because you know if you look at your automotive connections connections around your engines they've all got they'll have like silicone rubber on the back side and a rubber seal in the middle to keep out that moisture so your connection stays better um, then also I've got my ox guard so I'll use that uh, on the, actually on the connections in here to uh, keep the connection clean and keep the corrosion out so that's what I'll do and uh, we'll give an update as we go along Oh well, before I put these bulbs in the in the tail light fixture, I just want to talk about these bulbs I got here. Because that's the brake light and running light. <clears throat> and one of these is the backup light and one is for the turning signal. But what's unique about these bulbs is they're 2000 lumen. So they really put out the light. So uh, when I put this on, I'm going to have one side of be LED, the other side will be just the regular bulbs. So I'll be able to compare it and to see how much difference there is. Okay, I want to jump in here and clarify f a few things. I didn't realize I made this video quite a while back and never got around to editing it and posting it. Uh, one thing, I, in the start of that video, I was using a GoPro camera and it didn't do a very good job. It had a lot of background noise, thumping and bumping, carrying on. Didn't, didn't do near as good as my just my Galaxy phone like I'm using now. But I want to clarify a couple of things. What did I say in that video? I mentioned that um, those backup bulbs were 2,000 lumens. In fact, or 1,000 lumens each. Well, combined, it's 2,000 lumens. So technically, I guess that's right. But I also wanted to point out, I did not end up needing to use these load resistors. And I believe I did not have to use them is because I only updated uh, the rear taillights to LED. I left the front uh, turn a signal lights just the standard bulb so they must create enough load where that's not an issue but I did want to point out the bulbs I did use so if you want to do this project oh and there's the 
the ox guard or that stuff there. Yeah, that was that stuff I used and the antioxidant because that's been over two years ago and knock on wood, I have not had a flicker on any of my lights since. Uh, so that little project has worked out well for me. I've had no more light issues. Always before, I always turn around a brake light, turn signal, something wasn't working. Uh, so let me show you what bulbs I actually used and I'll, I'll put these in the notes too with, with links. But I wanted to point this out on the marker lights, you know, the one, the, just the running lights on, on the tail lights. That, that's, I, I used two of those. And then when it comes to the brake lights, that's the ones I used. And then when it comes to the turning signal and the backup bulbs, uh, this is what I use. So I use a total of four of these. So it uh, takes care of both the turning signal and the backup light socket. Uh, that does an awesome, especially the backup bulbs are, are incredible. So I took a little experiment uh, with different different lights and what worked, what didn't. But you know, for two years now, I've, I've had these bulbs in. None of them, none of them have burned out. They're all all working great for me so far. So hope that clears up a few things, and maybe you, if you tackle this project, it'll make it a little easier for you. Thanks for watching. Okay, about ready to put the light back in the RV but I was wanting to show you and I, of course I put my this right here ox guard I filled up the connection with it and s snapped it together but I was wanting to show you how well that, um, that liquid Teflon worked really good got a, got a good sealing on those wires on both sides a tip when you put that Teflon on you want to keep it laying this direction you don't want to because it's so thin if you had it held up like this and applied it it could run down in, into the connector and you don't want that you just want it to stay on those wires to seal out the moisture so we got that and i'll set this in here and of course it, it's so bright i don't know if we'll see much difference or not but we'll, we'll see what it looks like Well, I don't know if the camera's picking it up or not, but I can tell a difference. If you, because um, it's the bright, I mean, I got, I got the sun beaming right on the back of this thing, so it's super bright. But I'll know here in a couple of hours when it gets darker. But the, uh, the backup light really seems to be much brighter. And the turner signal, it's got a good snap to it. I like that too, see how quick it is. It's like on, off, on, off. And see how bright the, the uh, backup light is compared to this one. Yeah, you can't even tell that, that you can barely even tell the backup light is on. And the turner signal, you know, it, you can tell it's flashing, but not getting a good pop. But you go over here to this LED 2000 lumens, even in the daylight, gives you a good color. Uh, so later this evening, it'll get dark. And we'll see what the difference is. And then I'll do the same thing to that side. Super duper. Okay, so that's our hazard lights. It's almost completely dark. Okay, big difference. No, I'm, well, I'm, well, I'm fine. Uh, okay, now, honey. Um, okay, turn off the hazards. Put, hit the brake lights. Gosh, what a difference. Okay, it's pitch black at night. Turn off my headlight here, or my flashlight. Okay, honey, turn on the flashers. Oh yeah, much brighter. That's great. Okay, now turn the flashers off. And I hit your brake lights. Yeah, okay, that's brighter. Okay, and there's reverse. Big difference. Of course, the camera's going to compensate. Let's see what it looks like behind it here. Whew, that light's bright. Okay, so that's in reverse. And look how it lights up the house. So, I think it's going to be great. Big difference. Big difference. So, it's just LED on one side. All right. So, there you have it. Okay, well, I got my lights all finalized. I'm going to show you a little bit how bright they are. Give you a little idea. 
I'm going to turn the lights out in the building here, and then I'll, I'll have Sherry operate the lights, backup bulbs, running lights, and all that good stuff. Give you an idea what LEDs will do for you. Okay, honey, uh, turn on the parking lights, running lights. All right. Looks good. All right, now turn on the uh, left turning signal. Awesome, bright. Right turning signal. Okay. Try the hazards. Looks good. Okay, turn off the hazards. Okay, now hit, hit the brake lights. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Okay. That's fine. Uh, now put it in reverse. Oh, yeah, that's my favorite part is the burr. Okay, let go of the brake, honey. All right, now look how bright these are. Of course, the camera can't really show you how bright they are. Well, it does. It's, it's almost blinding, isn't it, when you look at it? It's almost like headlights now. Because when you go into a camp spot and you're backing up, look how it lights up the ground. And yeah, see how it reflects off that metal building? How pure white that is. So that's, that's one of my favorite parts is those backup bulbs. Of course, you can see I've added the um, the high those marker light or brake lights up high, so people can see me. Honey, hit the brakes again. Yeah. Okay. Just tap them a couple times. Tap the brakes. Tap. Keep. There you go. Keep tapping them. All right. Good deal. Yeah. You can see those 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 lights up here that I added. You know, they get they're, they're, they stay on all the time as marker lights, but they get brighter when I, we tap the brakes so people can see what we're doing when we're slowing down. The, we put this mural on there. Actually, it's a Wolf's Pass, I believe. And we actually uh, uh, stopped there and took that picture, and they blew it up and put it on there for us. The, the regular third brake light was kind of right here in the middle. I didn't want to mess up the mural, so that's why I added those two. Awesome. Okay, honey, thank you. There you go. But anyway, I love my LED upgrades. Oh, she turned the lights out on me. <laughs> anyway, I guess that means I'm done videoing. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.